Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back in history to about four years ago, 2017, where on this day, the name Harvey Weinstein became popular not because of a movie production, but because of sexual assault. On this day, the New York Times published an investigative report against uh, Harvey Weinstein. Um, on the 5th of October 2017, it was a detailed investigation into allegations of sexual harassment against the film producer, really, really popular movie producer. The bombshell report led to him being arrested and his convictions on charges of rape and other acts of sexual misconduct. It since then has become recognized as one of the defining early moments of the Me Too movement. If you remember many, many names, Kevin Spacey, uh, Mark, um, not Mark now, um, Harvey Weinstein, uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, there's been so, so, so many of them that eventually were named and, you know, well, some have been convicted of sexual assault. The list of his accusers eventually grew to several dozen women, ranging from well-known actresses like Ashley, uh, Ashley Judd and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, to women who he had worked for, uh, who had worked with right, for as little as a day, um, uh, you know, at um, his company back then. He was immediately fired from his company and expelled from Motion Pictures Academy of Arts and Sciences, and eventually was found guilty and uh, sentenced. Uh, I believe he's still appealing here and there, but you know, th this was the day that. The investigative report against Harvey Weinstein was released by the New York Times. And it's interesting, you know, because of the um, reports that we are still seeing, you know, here in Nigeria and where investigative journalism has led, you know, the world. Um, he, also here in Nigeria, David Hunday, which we've spoken about a couple of times, you know, has, of course, been... You know, that name basically became popular because of investigative journalism. Uh, Fishayo Shoyombo has also been one of those names that you would never forget when it comes to investigative journalism. Um, and, you know, today we're talking about Pandora Papers. We're talking also of NASCO and terrorism and some of all of that. But um, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's very, very important work. What's most important really is what steps are taken after these things are put out. And that's where Nigeria seems to have not picked up yet. The Harvey Weinstein story um, was, you know, is, is a pretty clear example of how the United States, you know, justice system works. Same thing with R. Kelly, who has been found guilty, might get up to a life imprisonment. But these things were done, and I listened to a podcast like about two days ago of the journalist who started the R. Kelly um, investigation and eventually um, led to him being arrested and being charged with these crimes. So the important thing, and this is what I'm trying to point out, in Nigeria, yes, there's fantastic investigative reports every now and then on certain things. But what steps are taken after, aside the controversy it creates on social media, aside, you know, the tweeting and the Instagram posts and, you know, the discussions across the country, what happens next? We don't even take actions when we catch someone on CCTV committing a crime or putting dollars in their babariga or slapping someone in public. Talk less of an investigative, you know, journalist carrying out months and months of work to expose, you know, certain crimes here and there. Um, and that's where we're still failing in Nigeria. And, it, you know, it, I feel that's where we need to do better. The system needs to be able to act, you know, without, you know, necessarily waiting for uh, controversy first. It doesn't need, you know, social media campaign to act. Um, the smallest things need to be done because they should be done. And that's how a system works. Um, but we'll get there. I believe we will get there. Congratulations to everyone who, well, kudos to everyone, you know, who, who is uh, doing fantastic with investigative journalism here in Nigeria. And I hope that we get to see more Pandora Papers and more of the likes of the NASCO um, uh, report. Good morning. Our first major conversation today is talking about zoning in Nigeria. The conversation has, of course, you know, caused loads of uh, discussions across the political parties and political analysts across the country. Where is Nigeria going in 2023? How important is the zoning conversation? The Northern um, Governors Forum, the Southern Governors Forum um, have also, also shared their thoughts. And also political analysts and leaders have also shared their thoughts concerning zoning. We'll be talking with Mr. Oshinowa Ibrahim after this break. <laughs>